Hey, what's up everybody? And welcome to the very first episode of Down to Business, a weekly web series where we talk about building a business from the ground up. I'm John Henry, your host, and every week I or someone I bring on the show will answer any of your questions that are related to about the first one to two years of starting a company. So everything from marketing to how to pitch to how to find investors and so forth. Uh, so quick disclaimer here, I am not a guru. I've not been in the game 20 to 30 years. I've been in the game five years now, roughly. Started my first company four or five years ago now, uh, built it up to a modest sized business and was fortunate enough to have an exit there. Uh, from then on, I went on to found Co-Found Harlem, which is Harlem's first uh, ever incubator uh, and it's where we find ourselves today. Uh, and then somewhere along the way, I became a VC, investing just about 10 companies now. So I have enough uh, experience and I spend just about all my time with early stage companies. So this show is perfect for anybody who's an aspiring entrepreneur uh, or a, an entrepreneur that has just started and again has questions around the first one to two years. Um, so with that, every week I'm going to post something on Instagram and I want you guys to jump in with the hashtag DTB show. Uh, CC me and I'll get, I'll get you all the information towards the end uh, and I would just want you guys to chime in with questions and every week I'm gonna try and get through as many as I can three four five uh, and deliver this to you continuously so we can build together uh, and with that said uh, I have a few questions on the Rolodex so we're gonna get to them right now let's get down to business okay so this is the perfect question to open up the whole show with so I'm excited thank you uh, when is it okay to leave your job to pursue your dream uh, full-time? Um, and so there's, there are a number of answers to that because the truth is everything depends, right? And it all depends on your situation. Do you come from a wealthy family that can afford to give you a cash cushion, in which case the answer is immediately? Do you have savings uh, that can last you a couple of months of runway? Um, in my case, when I started my company, I didn't have either come from a broke family uh, and I wasn't the best at saving. And so the answer that I think uh, might resonate with, with some of those watching is you start on the side, right? Start your side hustle. So if you, in my case, I was going to school full time and working full time and I still made the time somehow to start on my business, my first business. And, it would, and I would start gradually, and I would have one customer, two customers. Eventually, that turned into 10, 15 customers. Uh, and so the balance started tilting, where my side hustle was kind of becoming my primary hustle. Um, and as that happens, I found that for me, the time to make the leap was when I physically uh, couldn't do one, I couldn't do both. So the, the hustle was taking up so much time that I had to choose, it's now or never. Uh, and I think that's, that's a really nice organic way to do it. Because if you just jump and say, okay, I'm quitting without having anything established, you're not gonna have revenue, you're not gonna have experience, you're not gonna have confidence. So if you start now with it on the side and you build it up, eventually you're gonna get to that point where you're gonna know when it's time to make that leap. So that's my suggestion to you. Thanks for the question. The elevator pitch, as they call it. Um, I, I love this question uh, and I come across a lot of entrepreneurs that are great business people that have built impressive products, but that can't pitch for the life of them. Uh, and so this is actually an art form that I think is really worth uh, investing in and learning how to do it the right way. Um, and the way I've done it historically in the past is just getting down, it's, it's really hard to synthesize, right? So your the vision in a founder is so large that it's, it's often difficult to get it down to one line. But you're going to have to do that and you're going to have to put pen to paper and get on the whiteboard and sum down your entire company into about 10 words and then have a few maybe supporting sentences. So do this exercise over and over and over. If you have a co-founder, do it with the co-founder over and over. Uh, and then the best way to put it into practice is to practice. So grab people that don't know your business and tell them the one-liner over and over. And then ask them what their perception is of what you do. And the, the closer you get them aligned to what you actually do, when you have a fit there, you have a strong elevator pitch. So again, to sum it up, 
put a lot of work into summing up your vision into one, two lines, uh, and then practice telling that to people over and over and over and over and over. Uh, and as you do it, you build confidence, you find out how to say it funny, how to adapt it to different situations, uh, and that is the way, in my opinion, to do an elevator pitch. A difference between a business plan and a pitch deck. Well, uh, the similarity is that they're both a tool that you use to communicate what you're doing to another party. That other party could be an investor, could be a banker, uh, it could be a customer, it could be a new employee, etc. So I think that uh, I think that the real thing to figure out here is what type of company do you want to be? If you want to go for more traditional style franchise mom and pop shop business, which by the way, contrary to what TechCrunch and all these other guys are alluding to, there's nothing wrong with. In fact, uh, startup guys can learn a hell of a lot more than they think from uh, traditional business because they make money. Uh, so if you want to go that route, having a business plan is going to be key because banks will ask for it uh, and more traditional style financing thinks a little bit more traditionally and so they're going to request this document. Um, and I think you should write your own. I've, I've made the mistake of outsourcing it. I paid some consultant who knew nothing about my business you know, $3,500 to do the, the business plan and it was garbage. So if you're gonna do it, invest the time into doing it on your own. Now, Pitch Deck on the other hand, and my suspicion is that a lot of you guys watching this show are gonna opt for Pitch Deck. It's a 10 slide document, maybe maximum 12 slides, that effectively does the same thing as a business plan but in a much more condensed uh, and presentation oriented way. What do I mean? A pitch deck is often a tool that you're in front of, that's behind you, and then you're pitching in very similar to like a Steve Jobs style fashion. Uh, and in this deck, you answer everything from market to competitors to why you should do it to what are your competitive, uh, competitive advantage. And maybe actually in a future episode, we can get into the, the, the proper way to do a pitch deck the way I see it. Um, but so that, that's the difference between pitch deck and biz plan. So again, if you're a more traditional style company, you're going biz plan, although it wouldn't hurt to have a pitch deck. Uh, if you're gonna go high growth startup, you go with a pitch deck and invest a hell of a lot of time into pitching that pitch deck uh, because that's the real key. Thanks for the question, Kenny Soto. Uh, if you guys don't know him, check him out. He's a hardcore digital marketer. I've known him for a few years. Appreciate you coming on the show on the first episode. Uh, so the question is how to, how to know what's working for your competitor. Uh, I like this question. I think a lot of people will point to going to like analytics uh, and going for really technical stuff. I like to keep it really simple in general and especially in this space. Um, just, just pay attention uh, to their customers and, and connect with them and ask them what they liked about it. Uh, and ask yourself what you like about their experience. Go on their Instagram, go on their Twitter, go on their website. Chances are what you like about what they're doing is also what's working for them. How do you grow as a leader? That's the question of all questions. Thanks, Micah Yost, uh, for, for chiming in. Also a good buddy from Omaha. You guys got to check him out. Uh, so, look, I can only speak to my experiences. In the beginning of my entrepreneurial career, uh, I thought that I could be a dick just because my business card said CEO. <laughs> and so I was arrogant and brash. Um, and I went the Steve Jobs route of like being a hard ass on everyone to get the best results from them. Uh, and there is some truth to that being effective, but honestly, it will only take you so far. Uh, and criticism actually breeds resentment in people. And so your team starts resenting you. Uh, and I've gone through some situations where I've lost co-founders uh, and I've had, I've had uh, great relationships go sour. Um, in the company internally and also with vendors and everything else uh, because I was too brash and too arrogant. And so at this point, I've, and also I had a bad tendency of being a, a micromanager. Uh, and being a micromanager is actually a pretty, uh, it's a good, it's a sign that you're not trusting enough because you have to be on top of everything. And it's a style of leadership, I'm not gonna knock it. Uh, and it did get me to where I had to go with that company. These days, I'm more inter interested in mobilizing people. So how can I bring a team around me and put them in the position so that they can shine and do their thing? 
Like right now, my brother Jeffrey's behind the camera. I trust him 100% to do what he has to do from that aspect. Uh, Adam Thomas is working with me on Kofa Harlem and he's got a, a brilliant strategic mind and so forth. And these days, I find that bringing people on, first be picky about who you bring on, but when you bring them on, you're bringing them on for a reason. So you trust them to do what they have to do. Um, and that has is really been working for me lately. I, I find that um, I have less control as I'd like um, in terms of the day-to-day -day and being in the weeds. But in general, I think that the organization is able to scale a lot more quickly when you do something like that. So that's my take on leadership these days. Let me know if it works for you. All right, guys, I think this is all we have for you on the very first episode of Down to Business. Thank you so much for watching, for being a part. Uh, I'm having a great time. My crew's having a great time. Uh, we're looking forward to just pumping this content out on a regular basis. So if any of you guys watching uh, have any questions about the first year to two of starting a company, or if you know any friends that are in this process, share this video with them uh, and give them the chance to ask a question. Uh, I'm gonna be using Instagram as my main platform for this. Uh, so go to my Instagram, I'll link it in the bottom, and use hashtag DTB show to ask a question. Uh, and we'll get to it next week. So that's it. That's all I have for you. Once again, I'm John Henry. Thank you guys for watching. See ya!